State Representatives Brian Harrison of Ellis County and Tony Tinderhold of Arlington. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Always good to be with you, Jack. Thank you. And so uh, let's start with the new Republicans uh, who could very well be in the ha in the Texas House come January for uh, defeated incumbents. Another five are in runoffs. We're just talking about North Texas. And then there's another one who's ordering a recount. So why do you think this is happening? And Representative Harrison, we can start with you. I think the voters of Texas have had their eyes open like never before to the ways in which their elected so-called Republicans are selling them out, uh, colluding with Democrats uh, to destroy liberty uh, in, in this in the, our capital down in Austin. I think they've had enough. And the election results, I think they speak for themselves. It was a resounding defeat for the failed liberal leadership uh, team in the Texas House uh, led by Dade Phelan. And it was an absolute victory for pro-liberty conservative voters across Texas who have been sending Republicans to Austin, expecting them to do the will uh, of the Republican Party to advance conservatism, to advance liberty, but they haven't been doing that. I think it was a best case scenario for the future of Texas. Representative Tinderholt. I think it's multifaceted. I think first, uh, the sham impeachment of the most effective attorney general in the country. Uh, it was an absolute sham. Uh, nobody was sworn in under oath. It, 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 it was just horrific. Uh, school choice, the governor came in strong against the people that went against school choice. And then, I mean, really, you know, if you look at how the Republicans continue to partner with Democrats to pick a speaker, I think that the voters are educated and they're tired of it. And so those are three big factors. And then again, you know, uh, Representative Harrison mentioned how they're selling them downstream. Their Republicans are coming home telling people that they did all these great things uh, when we did things that were partially good oftentimes that could have been significantly better had Democrats not uh, been a part of leadership, basically watering down good Republican legislation. Voters are smart and they know it. Yeah, and we'd be and Jack, real quick, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention and thank Governor Greg Abbott for his leadership, especially on the school choice issue. It's one of the very few um, Republican Party of Texas priorities. Over 30 states have already put parents in charge of their kids' education. Texas should have been leading in education freedom. Uh, Governor Abbott called us back so many try times trying to get us to pass it. And it wasn't the Democrats that killed us. I want to be very clear. It is not the Democrats that stopped conservative bills from passing. It's the failed liberal leadership of Dave Phelan. If he had wanted school choice to pass, it would have passed. He was able to get 60 of our Republican colleagues to impeach Ken Paxson with less due process than third world kangaroo courts. If he'd wanted school choice to pass, uh, like Governor Abbott was demanding, it would have passed. So Governor Abbott being involved, Ken Paxson, Sid Miller, strong conservatives, Ted Cruz all across the state. We all got together and we are going to, we are starting the process now of fundamentally reforming the Texas House of Representatives. And let me follow that up real quick, Jack. I, I, I think it's important. It's important for people to know that this is the first time I've ever seen a governor, lieutenant governor, Sid Miller, the attorney general, and several Republicans endorse, endorsing against several incumbent uh, Republicans. I've never seen it in 10 years of being there, and it's a very telling story. And it's also telling to how important it was to people like myself, Representative Tenderhold, that we were traveling around the state as well. I can't tell you how many campaign events uh, that I attended, that he attended with Governor Abbott, with Attorney General Ken Paxson, with Senator Ted Cruz, campaigning in an unprecedented fashion against sitting Republicans in the Texas House, because I've got four young children. Your viewers have kids and grandkids. The next generation is literally on the line. But the Republican leadership team of the Texas House uh, has not been acting like it. And so in my opinion, they have forfeited their ability to be in leadership in the Texas House. And I'm so excited to welcome these challenges. And we're going to get a lot more victories, too, in the runoffs. You just wait and see. All right. Let's talk about uh, Speaker Dave Phelan. He's in a runoff against David Covey. Do you think he's going to uh, survive this or do you think he's going to lose? And if so, why? But well, oh, let, let me let me touch on that. I think first and foremost, I think he's at risk of even winning his reelection, which, you know, I don't think that's normal for a sitting speaker to not be able to easily and handily win their election. Um, and second, I think that he's forfeited the right to be speaker uh, by appointing the Democrat chairs, going against the Republican Party so many different times. And look, what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to get their current leadership team to step in. Cody Harris, uh, Bonin, 
um, boroughs. They're going to try to get them to step up so they can retain this power. And I think that the body is going to push back and say, we're not okay with the same old thing. The short answer though, Jack, is I don't think he wins re-election, but if for some crazy reason, reason he did, I don't see any way, any any tunnel, any any way that he can become Speaker of the House again. I just don't see it happening. He he literally created an environment where so many Republicans lost their reelection. He 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 did the proverbial cut his members up, which they use that against us all the time. Why are you cutting us up when we're trying to force them to do Republican things? He cut his members up bad uh, by having him do the things that he did this time. I don't think it's recoverable. I don't think he wins re-election. Uh, but if for some crazy reason he goes back, I don't think that he's the speaker again. Representative Harrison. Look, uh, it's not just Dade Phelan, but it's Dade Phelan and his entire liberal leadership team. OK, his his liberal lieutenants that spent all session colluding with Democrats to deliver what I strongly believe was the most liberal session in the history of the Texas House. So whether Dave, we don't know if Dave Phelan is going to win. Uh, he may not even win his seat back in the House. If there's one thing that Dave Phelan um, and his team are really good at, it's going to get Democrats. So I guarantee you right now they're trying to figure out how many Democrats in Southeast Texas can they get out to, to save his seat. But even if he gets reelected, I believe him and his leadership team have forfeited their right to vote. Listen, the future of, the, of our state and our country is on the line, and I firmly believe that the people of Texas deserve, and they, they want this. They deserve bold, conservative, unapologetic leadership with a clear agenda for liberty. And that's what they deserve, and that's what I'm committed to making sure happens in the next legislative session. I mean, we should point out that if a Democrat did not vote in the Republican primary, they're not allowed to vote in the runoff. Um, but the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, I mean, I've talked to different conservative lawmakers who say this is a very conservative session and they back all of the, the what they call policy wins. So, um, you know, I hear you saying this is a very liberal session. Other conservatives say it's a very it was very conservative. So why is there this such a differing view on on what took place in this session? I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll answer that. And I'm guessing one of them was Jared Patterson, uh, the same person that touted that he was the number one most conservative person of the session. And then, well, l l let me tell you how, how this works. These Republicans come out and they support the speaker with everything that they can. They will tell you that it was the best session ever because they want to be a part of leadership. They want their bills to pass. The difference between them and people like uh, Representative Harris and I, is that we want to go down there and we want to pass good legislation. We want to modify things to make them better. And we want to kill bad legislation. Well, when you do that, you're not liked very much by the leadership team. So, so those people oftentimes that are telling you that want to and have to continue being a part of that leadership team and they will protect them at any cost. They'll say that it's the best thing ever, but what they're not continuing to tell you, they don't finish the sentence and tell you, well, we passed this bill, but it was watered down in these three ways because Democrats wanted it that way. And they're not telling you the full story. Look, Jack, there's absolutely no question about it. Last session was the most liberal session in the history of the Texas House. Yes, they can point to a couple things that we did that were good. And I want to be really clear. Nobody, not one human being in the state of Texas has alleged that nothing good happened last session. That would be an absurd uh, allegation. But two things can be true at the same time. A, a handful, a small number of good bills passed, and it was still the most liberal session in the history of the Texas House. Look, we, we blew up government spending more than ever in our state's history, over 35 percent. We expanded every government program. We cut nothing. Dade Phelan and his team killed the uh, border security bills, the Border Protection Unit Act. Dade Phelan and his liberal team killed the Texas COVID Vaccine Freedom Act. Do you know this? They kept us from being able to ban COVID vaccine mandates for students. They advanced a bill to deprive Texas adults of their Second Amendment rights. We, and then on school choice, we didn't just not pass school choice. The Texas House passed a budget that literally made school choice illegal. OK, they killed the um, Republican Party uh, of Texas Priorities, And that's before we even get to perhaps the most egregious thing. They impeached the attorney general of the state of Texas with less due process than third world kangaroo courts in what I would describe as the most authoritarian, autocratic, disgusting, reprehensible and reckless 
use, and I would say abuse, of government power that has ever happened in the chamber of the Texas House, possibly tarnishing its reputation forever. Dade Phelan gave, gave Ken Paxton less due process than Nancy Pelosi gave Donald Trump. It absolutely, without any question, was the most liberal session in the history of the Texas House. Jack, Jack let, me give you, let me give you an example. So on the budget, everyone wants property tax relief. Um, they're lying to people telling them it's the largest property tax relief in history. Uh, it's actually $12.3 billion, I think, plus the $5.2 uh, billion that we passed, I think, in 19. So those two together, sure, it's big, but them telling you it's the biggest in the history is untrue. And they're also not telling you that I did an amendment to the property tax relief to add another $8 billion, and Dade and his leadership team killed that amendment. They got people to vote no on it. We wanted to go up to $20 billion. When things like that happen, the voters listen. They watch. And, 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 yeah, and, and, and I could be, I, Jack, I could be here all day. DEI, they bragged that they banned DEI. Well, you know what Dade Phelan and his liberal flunkies did? They actually passed an amendment under, under a Republican name that gave lifetime protection for DEI staff. Did, I, I'm guessing you didn't know that on election integrity, absolutely nothing. The Texas Senate passed a bill to amend the Constitution to require you be a citizenship to vote. That was killed by the failed liberal leadership in the Texas House. The Texas Senate passed a ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying. Dade Phelan and his team killed that. The Texas Senate passed a bill to stop the Communist Chinese Party from buying farmland in Texas. That was killed by the Texas House. I could be here for the next two hours talking about pro-liberty conservative bills that they passed. And that's before you get to the fact, and they don't brag about this, the Republicans, but it's the truth. They couldn't pass the eight priorities of the Republican Party of Texas, but the House Calendars Committee under liberal Dave Phelan and liberal Dustin Burroughs prioritized over 500 Democrat bills while telling the Republican voters in Texas, we are not going to pass the eight priorities that you've asked us to pass. It was so, the most liberal. It's not even close. So let me ask you, going back to what Representative Tinderholt said as far as the property tax cuts, I mean, the governor has said it. The lieutenant governor has said it. They, those two have called this the largest tax cut in the world. So um, I guess the, you're you're criticizing them for saying that. No, nope, well, I'm, me... I'm not going to criticize the governor or the lieutenant governor if that's what they want to believe. But technically, when you look at it, it was a bill that was 12 plus billion dollars this time added to the five billion that we did in 19. The problem is we overcollected, I think, 32 or $35 billion from, from people in Texas. And what did they do with it? They increased government spending. The Texas House did. They increased it instead of giving it all back to the, the, the taxpayers. Well, and it's all about prior, it's all about priorities, too. Um, the Texas House, and it's, this can't be overstated, the Texas House spent more time working on gambling expansion. I don't even care how you feel about the issue of gambling. We spent more time trying to expand gambling, the leadership of the Texas House did, then we did prioritizing property tax relief or ending COVID mandates. And in fact, it was one of Dave Phelan's liberal lieutenants, Dr. Greg Bonin, who went to the back microphone to kill an amendment that would have put the state of Texas on a path to eliminate property taxes, which is in fact a priority of the Republican Party of Texas. It was Dave Phelan and his liberal leadership team that killed that. So let's, let's go forward and... Let's talk about you know what we could see in the next session starting in January. So if there are all these new faces in North Texas and, and elsewhere, uh, Republicans, how is that going to impact as far as how a speaker is elected, whether they're going to be Democratic committee chairs, and as far as policies are concerned? You want to go first, Tony? Go ahead, Brian. I'll let you have this. So, so look, Jack, it's a great question. We are starting now what I believe is the first time in the history of, of Texas since Republicans took over. We are going to start, and my goal is nothing less than the wholesale reform of the Texas House. We are going to make the Texas House Republican again. Gone are the days of Dave Phelan colluding with Democrats to put people who have 100 percent ratings with Planned Parenthood, people who support open borders, people who oppose the Second Amendment, putting them in charge of the Texas House. Gone are the days of letting an Obama, a Barack Obama White House lawyer being the House parliamentarian where he can advance socialism and kill liberty. Gone are the days of putting radical Democrats uh, in, in their positions as committee chairman. Uh, the people of Texas have spoken. 
They want leadership with an agenda for liberty. And we are going to take the Texas House from a bastion of liberal incompetence into a body that once again represents the will of the individual Texans who are hardworking, who are overtaxed, who, who want their state protecting them from the unconstitutional tyranny that's coming out of Joe Biden's uh, Washington, D.C. That process starts uh, right now. And I think the failed liberal leadership team of Dave Phelan is done. Representative Tenderholt, you know, it's an interesting question that, that because of timing, I have an op-ed coming out with one of Dade Phelan's uh, chairman uh, that we put out that Dade Phelan's reign is over. Uh, he cannot be uh, elected as the speaker. We don't think either of us think that he'll be reelected anyway. Um, so it's not just the people that were elected that beat incumbents. I'm talking to other members in the Texas House. Look, we know they're they're calling all the members. Well, we are too. And we're talking to chairman. We're talking to vice chairman. We're talking to everybody that's a Republican right now. And I will tell you that I think that they're going to be surprised. The current leadership team is going to be surprised that it's not 10 or 12 people coming to the Capitol that want to reform and, and have, have the Texas House leadership follow the rules, enforce the rules, have have parliamentarians that didn't work for the Obama administration that are that are mandating that bills whether they're good or not. I think they're going to be surprised by the number of sitting reps along with the new reps uh, in January that want new leadership, they want reform, and they want the House to operate the way that it's supposed to. There's a reason that our amazing Lieutenant Governor endorsed against so many House Republicans. There's a reason that our amazing Governor endorsed against so many House. Uh, Republicans, and it's coming to it's coming to an end. Their reign of partnering with Democrats and having the uniparty watering down Republican legislation that Republican voters ask for, or want for uh, the the Republican Party has asked us to pass. Those days are over where they're going to water those things down, and I think a new beginning happens in January. Yeah, and, and Jack, real quick, uh, it's not just the governor and lieutenant governor and agriculture commissioner and attorney general. It's all of them. It's Representative Tenderhold. It's me. But it can't be overlooked that it's also President Trump. Uh, I was with him a week or two ago and, and was able to thank him personally for getting involved in trying to reform the Texas House of Representatives to a Texas first and America first body that will pass conservative priorities like school choice. And then in addition, on the uh, issue of, being the mo of it being the most liberal session in Texas history, we haven't even talked about the fact that my friend and patriot who's on the interview with us, Representative Tony Tenderholt, conservatives like him were for the first time in the history of Texas banned from speaking on the floor. Representative Tenderholt was told he was not even allowed to go to the microphone. microphone. Representative Gary Gates was denied a personal privilege speech. This has never happened. He took he didn't like the fact that Matt Schaefer, Representative Matt Schaefer and I on the Public Education Committee were fighting for conservative school choice reform. So what does he do? He creates a new committee and boots the conservatives off of it. Dade Phelan, his liberal lieutenants, their reign of liberalism and colluding with the Democrats is over. They might not know it yet, but the people of Texas have spoken and are going to continue to speak. And I'm super excited to be a part of performing the Texas House. I need to ask about uh, school districts and as far because we have seen a number of school districts in North Texas. They've had they said they've had to pass deficit uh, budgets, use uh, savings. Um, because they did not get more money, uh, enough additional funding. And, uh, and so I'm wondering, are your districts impacted by these, by this? And what are you telling your school districts uh, who are having, you know, financial difficulties? Some we're hearing some school districts are having to shut schools in the fall. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about that. Well, let me tell you, at the highest level, the most important thing I can communicate to your view viewers is two, two things. The Texas House of Representatives, the Texas Senate and the governor, governor came together and we funded public education, K-12 education at record levels this last session. We have never funded our public schools in Texas more than we are right now. So that needs to be really clear. We have funded public education, K-12, more than ever in our history. That's number one. Number two. The truth of the matter on school choice is the liberal teacher unions and the radical leftist bureaucrats 
that are in our government education monopoly have admitted it was them that sacrificed the extra $4 billion. That's what they're talking about. There was an extra $4 billion. They made the choice to sacrifice that extra $4 billion for, for teacher pay raises in order to keep a small number of parents who have children that are trapped in fa failing schools for, from being put in an environment that would be the best suited for the individual unique needs of their beautiful children. And it's absolutely reprehensible school choice is the civil rights issue of our time. Texas should have led on this. Other states have done this for the last three decades. But the liberal leadership in the Texas House worked with the Democrats and the teacher unions to deprive parents of school choice and education freedom. And they were willing and they made a conscious decision to withhold teacher pay raises and an additional $4 billion in funding in order to keep parents from being in charge of their kids education. Those are the facts. I am fighting with Governor Abbott, Representative Tender Holtz, Senator Ted Cruz, President Donald Trump to make sure every parent in the state of Texas uh, can choose where to send their kids to go to school and that we have the best public schools in America. And I say that as a proud public school parent myself. Yep. Representative Tender Holt, and then I'll let that be the last word. Yep. I, I, I couldn't agree with him more. I'll tell you on the flip side, in the legislature, we need to be very careful across the board, not just with education, about unfunded mandates, which we hear about from our educators all the time. And it it happens. It happens with law enforcement. It happens across the board. But I can't echo what uh, Representative Harrison just said enough. They purposely turned down $4 billion uh, to give teacher pay raises across the board. Teachers would have been happier than any other state had we passed that. Um, but the liberal leadership of Dade Phelan Liberal Republican members partnered with the Democrats, and they killed that. It existed. It was there. And we were going to be able to give teachers high-quality pay raises, and they killed it. Representatives Tony Tinderholt and Brian Harrison, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Always great to be with you, my friends. Good day.